Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I am so, so excited you guys are here tonight. Um, so tonight I wanted to, with back to school season, I wanted to pop on here and tell you my favorite um, organization tools and goodies. Um, all um you can find all of these at lakeshore learning which is having a huge um back to school sale it's their biggest sale of the year this video is also sponsored by lakeshore learning so all of these things you can get um if you grab them from the website or if you're lucky enough to have a lakeshore store by you you can go in person and grab them um there is a coupon code so make sure you go to the top of this post and grab that but you don't need the coupon code on a lot of it because tons and tons of things are on sale. Some 25% off or it just depends. One new thing um, Lakeshore sent me, I got to pick from a list of goodies, which if you know a teacher, you know they always have like a Lakeshore wish list. So it really was not hard to pick out um, some things, but I picked out this neon supply caddy and the cups come out and it comes with this little rack so there's six cups it's in the neon um color organization um group so you can see like i have my book bins behind me those are all the neon family i have some caddies and some trays um i have a lot from the neon and from like the primary color collection i love both of them but i'd love to hear what you guys are doing in your classroom tell me what you're doing in your classroom right now to get ready for back to school or are you still chilling on the beach um what are you up to or tell me your favorite um lakeshore goodie that you have and use in your classroom so this is the little caddy and it is so much fun you guys the cups come out so I'm thinking I would use this for like small groups. I could just pick this up, take it with me. I put three cups with markers. I have glue sticks. I have little golf size pencils, perfect for little fingers. Um, and then I have scissors and these giant ones are those loop scissors that um, bounce back open. And I love this because you can literally put the supplies, whoops, can't see it, put the supplies on the table so that way the kids can reach them or they can pass and practice sharing. So it's great for building um, those social skills also so they can ask, can I have one? And then they'll, they can share and pass it back and forth. Um, and then it's easy to clean up because you just put all the cups back in and you grab it. And I'm actually going to keep it. I found a little spot for it. I'm going to keep it um, right here. So this is kind of all of my small group stuff that I keep. And then this is kind of like my teacher table that I do um, would do small group at. So it's perfect. I can just grab it and then we're ready to go and put it away real quick because we know um, the longer your transitions are, the more um, fun behaviors you have in the classroom. So anything to make it quick and organized so you can move on to the next thing is amazing. So that is one of the things. And then I also have a set of these neon caddies. And I know most people use them for supplies. Like I also use these for journals. I have two of these that we use for when we do our writing journals. So I have like our ABC charts, our name tags, and then markers in them. So I have two of those over here you can see. And then our journals are right next to them, whether it be a writing journal or a fine motor journal. Um, but there's so many other ways you can use these caddies. So let me just show you um, some of my favorites. So with all the fun um, germs going around, um, you can make a sanitized station. Obviously this is more for like the teachers to use, but you can put your wipes in it, your um, hand sanitizer. And then if you have little tags that you label things that like needs to be cleaned or um, has been cleaned, you can put all that kind of in one little thing. And I actually keep this right up there. So that way it's always in the same spot and I know where it is. I can grab it um, whenever I need it. Another thing I use these caddies for, and this is one of my favorite things. It's a prep caddy. So it's all the things I use when I prep. Um, so I have like my Velcro dots. I have all the different kinds of magnet tape. Um, I have book rings in here. You can tell my supply is getting a little bit low. I keep three different sizes in here. One, two, three. And then in here, I have like tape, like a, my really super strong hole punch, a glue stick, a staple remover, my favorite cutting scissors, one for when I cut to laminate, a Sharpie, a pen, a staple remover, 
Oh, usually my tape version of the two. So I love this because like, let's say um, it's nap time and, but you need to sit by a friend because they either need your attention or you just want to sit by them because you just want to build that relationship with them. So even though they're chilling out, they're still awake, you can grab your supply caddy, go sit down next to them and you can cut and you can have a conversation with them because we all know we have to multitask um, when we teach a lot, a lot of the time. Um, so this is perfect. I also have one, I actually have one like down in my school because my school's in my home. This is my basement <laughs> um, that I finished for my school. Um, but I, so I keep one in my school and then I also keep one in my office upstairs. Like, so like your regular house, you could make one because you could like take this with you. We all know we cut and laminate while we're watching TV. So grab this, sit this next to you. You can watch Friends or whatever um, fun show you're watching on Netflix or Hulu, and you can cut, laminate, and um, chill and relax at the same time. So this is um, one of my favorites. And then for a lot of you, who, if you guys have these, like the Play-Doh stampers, these caddies are perfect so you can put them in and they can kind of see what letters they are. Um, on this side, I just put a little bucket because um, these are the numbers. These are from Lakeshore as well. Um, and then you can also just put a couple tubs of Play-Doh. This is really easy to pop out and you can put on the table and do for um, a table time activity in the morning or a, um, a table time uh, beginning of the day. You can get this up. This is a great nap time activity because Play-Doh is quiet. <laughs> um, you can use it for fine motor. You can use it for end of day. Um, so yeah, so you can keep this. I actually keep, I'm going to keep this right behind the hand sanitizer because it's, it's like a perfect little spot. Um, so yeah, but oh yeah, so these little stampers, so they actually have the letter on them and then they stamp in the Play-Doh um, and then the numbers come with it too. And those are from Lakeshore too. So those are really fun. But yeah, there's so many different ways you can use caddies in your classroom. You don't have to keep, use them um, just for markers and supplies. So moving on with more of the neon theme going because I'm just loving the neon collection they have. So you can also use these. Um, these are actually a paper tray holder. So obviously in um, preschool and kinder, we're not dealing with a lot of papers, but you guys, these are like so sturdy and I love using these for activities. Um, these, all my cubbies are from Ikea and they fit perfectly on the shelf. Um, you can see in them, they're not so tall where you can't see what's in them, which I really like that. Um, and they're also wide, so more than one kiddo can play um, with the activity on the table at a time. You can also plop this in the middle of the table um, for that morning um, table time. These are the um, the counting screws from Lakeshore. So they put the screw on and let, and this one's six, right, six. <laughs> and you just put all the screws on. And how fun is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. You could also use these to make patterns. Um, and they're, the length depends on how big it is. And my nail just popped off, so ignore that. I'm going to let go by. So these are the paper holders, paper tray holders, but don't use them for paper trays. Come over to my preschool tray session and use them as a tray. Um, I also, like you can keep the, um, you can even put your label on the outside. I have all the labels in my TBT store um, if you want them to grab them. And then, like, my have my, I only keep half of the set of the alphabet locks out because um, putting a full set out for preschool is just, it's too many and too overwhelming. So I keep half of the set out and then I flip it flip it, put the other set in later, and kind of switch it out off and on. Uh, so you can keep that and then look okay, right on the shelf. And again, you can see in, the kids can see what's inside and it's um, perfect to just throw out on the table for um, a table time activity. So you can use those trays for that. But my, one other thing I love doing is making like mini sensory bins. So this is a new one I made because I was inspired by this neon collection. So I made, look at this, neon chickpeas or garbanzo beans. So I literally made these today because I'm just loving the neon colors lately. So I just put in some pom-poms and you can't see them, but there's little star beads in here, neon star beads. These are those little 
eyeballs. They can put them on their fingers. Um, I have some little tweezers. And then I I didn't have a, a little tray that was neon, so all I did, oops, they're stuck in there. All I did was I took an A carton, there we go, and I cut it so there were um, two for each color, um, which also made a 10 frame. So if you want to make a 10 frame with an A carton, just cut two off. And then I used the same paint um, to paint the chickpeas, and I just painted the inside of the A carton so now the students can sort either the pom poms or the little beads or the chickpeas by color and they can do some fine motor by lifting up the tweezers but you don't have to have a ton of different sensory bins out um, or if you um, have to have one for kiddo for covid and then have to um or just for germs have to like shelf it for um a couple days like quarantine it you can just slide it back on the shelf and these um trays stack really well too um so that's perfect but kind of like perfect for two kids to play with um so it's great for like a table time activity but neon chickpeas and i use just acrylic paint to um paint the chickpeas so just a fun little idea for you so you can use them for toys you can use these trays for um little mini sensory bins and then i also like using them for when i'm doing water play at the table so we I threw in some little um, animals, a little loofah, I cut a sponge in, um, I think I cut this in like a half, just, or you can cut it in quarters, and then you could put some soapy water in here, and the kiddos could wash the little pets, they can squirt the water, um, if you're also doing any like baking soda vinegar science experiments, you can put these in here, because um, I've, um, you can, these are super easy to wash and clean, so these are super awesome for sensory play if you're doing anything with shaving cream um this these bins are perfect because you put it in there and then i'm sure you guys have seen me use these before with shaving cream and then you can take them to the sink and they're super easy to manage and clean um so yeah oh so kelly asked that i use neon watercolors to i think my comments are delayed um, neon watercolors to do the chickpeas. I use neon acrylic paint. You could, I'm sure, use the neon um, watercolors to paint the chickpeas too. Oh, the pom poms? Yeah, I love them because they're so sparkly. It's so fun. But you can really throw any kind of, any, um, I love throwing pom poms in sensory bins because it just adds a little flair and it just has them picking up all those little pieces with that pincer grass, making that just more great flavor. And then, like I said, they um they have all the neon colors to match the bins, so it's perfect. And you guys, these are super strong, super sturdy. Like these are gonna last, last a lifetime. So to keep going with all the trays, because we all know we all love trays. Yeah. So those were the paper trays. Yeah. These were paper trays. So I'm sure the older grades use them as paper trays, but we're gonna use them as play trays to create um, fun learning experiences. So, now, these are the lids actually for the tray, but, so you could have your sensory bin, and you could, you can get lids for these, and you could put the lid on, obviously you would get the blue one to match it, but you can stack these up, so you can stack them up and have all your sensory bins like over if you don't um, like over on a shelf if you want extra in addition to your sensory table or maybe you don't have a sensory table so this would be a great option especially um for kinder teachers who maybe don't have a sensory table in their classroom um so you can use the lids and stack them up to store them away or like i said they match <laughs> or you can use them as another tray um i use trays a ton in my classroom one um I can prep different activities for the whole day. So I'll, maybe I'll prep this sticker collage activity, and then I have a literacy game that I'm gonna do for small group, and then maybe I have even another literacy game, or maybe I have the same literacy game, just at a different level, and I will have all those activities on trays, and I will have them prepped wherever I keep them. Um, I usually keep them up there on the counter, you can't really see. Um, I have a little spot, I keep all my prepped activities for that day, 
Um, but then like literally when it's time for, this would be a great table time activity, I would just put this tray in the middle of the table and I have, you can even see I have my example on the top and then they grab a piece of paper and some stickers and they just make a fun sticker collage. Um, but this way it's prepped, it's ready to go. I can just grab it, put it on the table, sorry, put it on the table and then they're ready to go. Um, and then when this activity's over, I can put it away. And then now it's small group time. So now I have this activity out. And maybe I have, because obviously I have six letters out, but maybe I have four of these trays prepped and I have the matching cards on them. So each kiddo comes and sits down at their tray. This will be great for like morning, um, morning time too, because I drop all my stuff. And then you can just have the kiddos, they can match their letters, and then you can mix them up at the end and be ready for the next person. And again, you can one person can have you can put one of these at each spot, or you can work one-on-one -on -one or like three-on-one with a group, and you could put this in front of you, and you could kind of talk through it with your small group. So whatever way works for you, but these trays are great. Again, these are the lids to the paper trays. They're the lids, you guys. And um, the other side has the lip that goes on, so I would probably put them with the bump up. That way it stops the things from like sliding off the edge. Oh, and if you want these letter Play-Doh mats, these are in my school centers. These are in my school um, themed math and literacy centers. So, isn't that crazy? All the things that we love as teachers, we love trays, right? So again, these are the paper trays and these are the lids for the paper trays. So, and just for like size comparison, here is like one sheet of paper on it. So they could ha have, they could have one piece of paper and they could, um, they would still have room to do stuff around the edge or keep pencils or crayons or whatever. Um, yeah, so much fun. Again, I love just having them, so it just keeps me super, super organized. All right, so the next thing I have, I'm gonna show you guys um, my book bin. So right behind me, I have all of the neon, um, the neon book bins. So I actually don't use them as book bins. As you can tell, a lot of my things I do um, in my classroom, I don't use them as, I, mean, I, have, a, I have a primary colors on the top. Um, I love these. They're great because they're um, they're like that hard plastic again, and I keep I don't know what's left. Hold on. So, and these I keep them so that way I can pull them out. So you can actually connect them on the side. So that way, like let's say if you want like my ones on the top, they have heavy stuff in them, so I have them connected. So you can like you can connect them. So they're like all together and they don't like wiggle around. But these bottom ones, I don't keep connected because I literally grab these and I put these in the middle of a table and we do that. These are kind of like for my small group or for my morning table time. So these have just dry erase boards in them. Super simple. And then this little, these little like uh, metal buckets you can find um, like usually in the party section places or you could even use a cup. I just use a metal bucket because it won't fall over. Um, I lost my table spot when I moved the camera. So the little bucket, I keep all the markers and then I keep my little erasers, which I use just a black shirt cut up just so you can't see all the gunk on it. Um, and then they fit right in here in the front. So that way, if we're doing something and we need um, whiteboards for a small group, for table time, I can just grab these, put them out, and then um, super easy to clean up. And then, like I have in this orange one, I have chalkboard. So these I made with hands from the Dollar Tree. And then look, I have the little um, these are little um, like the party party snack cups. They fit right in here in the front too. So I just have like two little things of chalk. So I can just set these out on the table. And again, these are just prepped and ready to go. These, um, the orange one, I just have dry erase pockets in. Um, Cause sometimes we just use dry erase pockets as kind of a board. And then this one just has 
um, stamps and stamp pads in it. And then this one has mirrors in it. And then my ones on the top, um, they have um, all of my letter cards in them. So let me. So like all of my, if you have my letter build it bundle or my, my number build it bundle, all of my letter and number mats I keep up here so I can grab them and get them out um, whenever you can tell I can just grab them. Um, like just now I just grabbed them and showed you guys and then I can put it away. So let's say you forget to crack something. If you have all of this ready, you're like, oh no, I forgot to grab the whiteboard for table time. No worries. Done. You're done and you're ready and you're prepped and you're, your kids are ready to go. They're not waiting for you to go climb through a closet and get things out because they're right at your fingertips. So think about using like the book bins and the, um, the paper trays just in different ways um, to help you kind of stay organized and prep before. Oh, one more. Oh, one more way I use the cat. So here's another caddy I have. And then this is my assessment stuff. So when I do assessments, I have all of my like flashcards in here, the manipulatives that I use for my assessments. I have all of that in here ready to go. And then right next to that, the, those binders you see in the corner, um, those, that is my assessment binder. So that way I have all that ready to go too. So that's another way I use um, those awesome caddies. So, oh, here we go. You guys know I love a good Play-Doh tray. Everyone always asks where I get these Play-Doh trays from and Lakeshore has a set. So it has like red, orange, yellow, green, I think it has six in it, purple, blue, like so it has every color of the rainbow. So like this is the yellow one, like look how gorgeous that is. And then I just use it for the Play-Doh tray and I switch the things out as needed. Um, you can use regular Play-Doh or store-bought Play-Doh, do what works for you, do a combination. If you have time to make the Play-Doh, make real Play-Doh, if not just pop out some store-bought ones, no worries. But you can also use these trays for um, if you're doing an art activity, but I almost have one of these out probably every single day in my classroom. I have some kind of Play-Doh tray out because usually with everything I do, I um, make a Play-Doh tray to match and then I just switch out the color so that way the color kind of matches our theme um, for the tray. And then if you love my counting stews, you guys know that I also use my, for my counting stews, I also use um, these Lakeshore trays. So counting stews are basically just, you pick a recipe card and then you count out all the things and you put it in this little pot and you sing the song. So they're identifying numbers, they're counting, and I have one for like almost everything there is, um, like completely, <laughs> so many different stews. So these little, um, these are the trays I use for all of my counting stews. And again, these are, I want to say these are in the, um, the art, they're for like art and crafts, but I just use them as like a fun, um, a fun tray. So somebody said, where did I find the flat trays? So again, these flat trays over here, these are the lids to the paper bins. So I use the paper bin for its toys and activities, and then I use the lids um, to prep. And for the kiddos, they can do activities on, or I can prep the activity, put it in the middle table, and we are we're ready to go. So I hope those organization ideas keep you excited and motivated. But if you are relaxed at the beach, keep relaxed, and then when it's time to get organized, you can come back and um, watch um, this video again. But again, all of the links to all of my favorite things are at the top of this post. Um, this is the neon collection, like, um, so like the, the paper trays, the lids for the paper trays, the caddies is all the neon collection, the book bin, the pencil, um, the supply holder, um, they're all the neon collection, but they're also, it's like a primary color collection, if you would, um, rather have that. I have seen some teachers do get the primary and the neon, and then they have like all the shades of the rainbow, and that looks, that looks gorgeous too. So, and again, I keep on coming to the top of this post. Um, and again, Lakeshore sponsored this post, so thank you so much to Lakeshore for helping me 
show you guys all the goodies. I love the neon. It's just so much fun. And I know everybody's into like the pastel colors, but I think there's just something about early childhood that color is just, it's just everything. And I know um, we color code a lot of things in preschool. So um, like you can see over here, oh, oh, I forgot, I have one more thing. I'll tell you about these trays in just one second. Good thing I saw those. Okay, so you can tell like I color code all my kids um, when I had more than eight kids. Um, like I would just have like three kids would be yellow and three kids would be red. Um, Cause when I taught full day, I had up to 25 kids on my roster, but 18 a day. Um, they got to pick what days they came. So I color code all of the kiddos. So that way, maybe they can't recognize their name yet, but they can say, oh, my name is orange and it starts with A. So that at least helps them find the orange card with the A. Um, so these trays are perfect for color coding everything. One more tray I forgot to tell you about. So you, these are the trays that you guys always see me use. Um, they're the gigantic ones. So um, let me give you a little size comparison of the lids. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, and these are the easy craft trays. I actually kept the label um, so that way I can tell them apart. So this is the lid for the paper. And you can tell the um, the craft trays are bigger than the um, the tray the lids, and they have a a taller a taller lip. And they actually have a lip um, that goes up, so it'll catch things better. This will catch things, but it might roll over too. Um, so this would be great for more messy play. You could do shaving cream on this too. Um, I just have my back to school letter cards on these. Here's one way I use these straight. So I would have all these, so for an arrival activity or maybe I would do small group, I would have all the letter cards on a tray, put it in the middle. I would have the markers on there. So that way they would have to grab a letter card and grab their own marker. So that way they're getting their supplies independently. Um, so I try and have my kiddos be independent as possible, which it doesn't sound like a lot to have them to not have everything always divvied out on in their own spot but I think it's really important for kids to come in be able to grab their supplies and kind of play or get to work whatever you call it when they um, come in and do their table time activity so sometimes I think um, just putting this out in the middle with the activity on it um, and with the markers or whatever supplies, you could put glue sticks if it was a craft. Um, and then they could take out the letter they wanted, get their supplies. So it's just one more way that they're practicing getting their supplies, being independent, um, taking responsibility for themselves. Um, so super, super simple little things to do. But if you add up all those little things and all those little ways we're teaching them independence and to build confidence in themselves um, and to be self-sufficient, then they'll be able to be independent in the bathroom and independent at the art easel and independent all the other places. And it's also when you're using trays and you put shared supplies on a tray, it also um, promotes sharing, collaboration, turn taking, all of those things. So if all the markers are gone and they sit down, maybe you forgot to put one out, maybe you put out one less on purpose, um, then they have to problem solve, right? oh no, there isn't a marker, I need to go get the teacher, I need to ask for one more, which you wouldn't think is tricky, but for some three-year-olds, that is a skill that you have to teach. If you need something, don't sit there for 20 minutes and wait for me to um, just know that you need something, come get me, say, I need help. Um, it's actually um, like a skill and an objective that you can put on a lesson plan. So you can put on your lesson plan, okay, I put out this tray and I only put out two markers but we have six people at the table and so they're gonna have to problem solve they're gonna have to ask for help or ask for the material or maybe they know that all the markers are in this bin like by the end of the year probably even probably three months in my older kiddos because I've had a multi-age I had three four and five year old mix so my pre-k kiddos that were with me the year before would know oh I just need to go get the dry erase bucket they would just go get the bucket, put it on the table, 
and they would have markers and their friends would have markers. So, all these trays are good for so, so many things. So, these again are the, the easy, easy clean craft trays. And you guys, these are super easy to clean. They're great. And they stack really nice. These would be great to just set in the art center um, without anything on. So you could just literally have these because I have these on. I have these on the shelf in my art center. So if kiddos are doing Play-Doh or if they're doing collage or something, they can grab a tray themselves, get it out, and they can play on the tray. And then that way they can um, clean up their own mess or at least contain, <laughs> contain the mess. So keep a set of these on your art shelf or keep a set of trays on your art shelf for um, Play-Doh. I always try to keep the trays right under the Play-Doh. So if your Play-Doh is up here, the shelf below would have the trays. So that way they can visually see the Play-Doh. When they pull it out, they see the trays underneath. So they're like, oh yeah, I need a tray when, um, when I do Play-Doh. And then you can also obviously use those trays for um, other activities too. So glad I, I totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. So again, I hope you guys have an awesome night. I hope you guys are loving your summer or if you're still teaching all summer, you are amazing. We need to give you guys a big pat on the back because I know some of you guys tell me get grants or money, money um, from your school if you're lucky, um, if you're a lucky duck um, and you have like a budget on my blog, which I linked at the top too. Um, I have a blog post of my favorite thing from uh, my favorite math and literacy things from Lakeshore. Um, so if you need ideas on what to purchase, um, those are some things up there for you, um, too, if you need that, or if you get grant money, or so, do a, um, one of those fun funding sites, um, you can do that, too. I hope you guys have an awesome night, and I will talk to you soon.